So here's a question for you. Would you benefit from ongoing support to improve your sales conversations and ultimately close more business? The Sales Maven Society offers you daily support for your urgent sales questions, an extensive library of bite-sized trainings to hone your selling skills, and monthly live coaching calls where you receive individualized coaching from me specific to your business so that you're able to remove any bottlenecks in your sales process. This is the most robust sales coaching program around for an incredible value of only $147 a month. And you can join now for your first month for only $47. You get access to absolutely everything, including the live coaching calls with me. Come check it out and see if this is the place for you to really elevate your business to the next level. You can do this by going to yoursalesmaven.com forward slash society, hit the join now button. And then when it takes you to that page, enter this code, the number four, the number seven, and the word trial, T-R-I-A-L. So 47 trial, all one word, and you'll be a member. I can't wait to see you in there. Now, here's the podcast. conversations make you feel awkward or pushy, it's time to ditch the outdated salesy strategies. Your guide, Nikki Rausch, will show you how to combine kindness with selling skills to meet your prospects where they are, and in the process, how to up-level your influence and income. Learn how to earn business easily and effortlessly. Here's Nikki. Welcome and thank you for listening to The Sales Maven Show. I'm your host, Nikki Rausch. I'm here to answer questions, offer you tips, techniques, and strategies to master your sales conversations. Today's episode is an on-air coaching call with one of our brilliant Sales Maven Society members. It is Carol Wheeler. Carol, welcome to the show, friend. Thanks so much, Nikki. I'm thrilled to be here. I'm so happy to have you here. Share with the audience a little bit about you and your business. Sure. So I am Carol Wheeler. My business is NOPA Leadership, and, and I do strengths-based training and coaching for organizations and teams. I really love to help teams and leaders who feel like they're doing okay, but they want more to really grow their team into something spectacular by really leveraging everybody's individual talents. And you offer... um well, I'm going to ask you, so I know a little bit, I know a little bit about your business because not only are you a sales maven society member, you're also a VIP client for me. So I have some insight to your business, but share with everybody like ways that companies hire you and the ways that they can work with you. Sure. So most often companies start by hiring me to do some sort of workshop or training. So I do a lot of, um, strengths training. I'm a Gallup certified strengths coach. And so mm -hmm. a lot of times when a company starts with me, they want to do an all day retreat or an all day workshop where they really discover everybody's talents, understand what those strengths are and start to figure out how to um, map those strengths to work better together and provide more collaboration, more engagement, all those kind of things. Um, that is most often people start there. Um, sometimes companies start with a lunch and learn. Mm -hmm. so they're just interested Said, you know, so many companies these days are really trying to pour into their people. And so they're setting up these, you know, hour 90 minute lunch and learns on Zoom or in person to just give people a little nugget. So a lot of companies start there with me. Um, and then occasionally leaders will start with me by hiring me to do executive coaching. I just read a stat the other day, and I'm wondering if you are familiar with it, or maybe you have some other stats, but I read this stat that said, um, companies that invest in their employees' personal development or professional development, um, on average, increase their profits by 24%. Yeah. I was like, if that is an incentive enough for a company to be like, yes, we're going to invest in our people yeah. and specifically about strengths. So I, I'm trying to think if I've done the strengths finders, I feel like maybe I did years and years and years ago, but share a little bit about it for people who maybe aren't as familiar with it. Sure. And mostly sure. for me too. <laughs> sure. So, you know, there's lots of assessments out there, yeah. um, but Finder now called Clifton Strengths. It was called 
Strengths Finder for a really long time, but they okay. renamed it after Don Clifton, who created the assessment. Clifton Strengths um, attempts to measure your innate talents, those things that come naturally to you. One of the things I love about the assessment, it is based on years and years of research. So Don Clifton and his colleagues spent years interviewing people who are really successful in all different sectors, trying to find out what helped them get there. And they narrowed what they learned in those interviews down to talent themes. And so the assessment measures 34 themes of talent and will give you a list of your top five talents. So the things that you have the potential to be better than anybody else in the world at. Right? Mm. You can also get your full 34 list, which is really interesting because as you know, like they work together. Those talents don't exist in you by themselves. So, um, you know, I think I told you yesterday, my number one talent theme is strategic. Um, that looks different for me because my number two talent theme is connectedness that it might look for somebody else who had say strategic and achiever. Um, mm. but it really measures and any of these talent themes can be productively applied. That's one of the um, important measures is knowing that these are things that you can use in your personal life, in your professional life, in a lot of different ways. And so our goal is to help you discover them and then start building them. Okay. So from an organization standpoint, if you have your team go through the, the strengths assessment, and then as the leader, what do you do with that information? It's a great question. So many things, Nikki. One of one of my passions, and there, this is true for a lot of us Gallup certified coaches, um, is I, I want people to do a lot with those because a lot of times people take the assessment. This is what we do with a lot of assessments. We take them and we're like, oh, that's interesting. That's me. Okay. And we set it on a shelf. Mm -hmm. Strengths is a developmental model. So it's made to be used. So as a leader, um, one of the things you can do is you can start to use those strengths in one-on-one -on -one development with your employees. So you can help them start to see how can I help them um, fit, pick things to do in their job that are in line with their strengths? How can I help them take one of their strengths and develop that further so they can get better at pieces of their job? Um, you can use that as a team to help the team figure out who on the team should be doing certain things, right? Sometimes you might say, so deliberative is one of the strengths that I do not have. People with deliberative are really good at assessing risks. They usually make decisions a little bit slower. They really think through things at a really deep level. So if I have somebody with deliberative in the room and I'm the leader, one of the best things I can do is say, hey, Bob, what is your deliberative saying about this issue, right? What risks are you seeing that I'm missing? Oh, that's so powerful. I definitely don't think that's one of my strengths. So I love <laughs> that. I love that you brought that one up specifically. And that is so important to be able to have a team where you utilize people's strengths and then are able to call on people to get their, like what, like you said, what is, what is this saying to you? What risks are coming up that I haven't thought about yet? I think that's such a great question as a leader to be willing to ask that of your team and to know who's the right person to ask it of. Absolutely. The other thing I love to do is strengths. I, strengths is a safe way to address conflict on a team. Oh, say more about that. So a lot of times when a team is having a lot of conflict, Sometimes if that conflict is substantive, it's coming, it's not just emotional because we don't like each other, but it's like coming from we're tug of warring with ideas and we don't agree about certain things. A lot of times strengths can help us see where that's coming from, right? So I said, I have strategic, it's a really fast thinking strength. If I'm trying to make a decision with somebody with deliberative, um, and I'm not paying attention, I can get real frustrated because they're moving real slow and they get real frustrated with me because they think I'm not actually considering all the issues in the situation. Mm -hmm. um, and that can eventually lead to a conflict that all of a sudden we think we don't like each other and can't work together. But talking through the strengths of that can help people see where the conflict is and sometimes put it in, um, in a framework that isn't about you're wrong and I'm right, or I don't like the way you're doing this, but here's where this comes from and how it contributes to our team. That is so powerful. Ooh, yes. Okay. And then what size teams are you typically working with? Is there, is there a certain size team or tell me more about that too? Um, 
I love to work with teams from about eight to 15. Okay. I've worked with a lot of different size teams, um, but when we can do one-on-one -on -one strengths work where we're helping people individually understand their strengths in big groups, you know, up to two or 300, because everybody's kind of processing for themselves. But mm -hmm. with a team, what I like to do with a team is really, uh, I, it's facilitation, almost more like team coaching. So in that, a group of eight to 15 that works together on a regular basis that really relies on each other, that's mm -hmm. where you can do some of that deeper work, like what I was describing with conflict. And if somebody is wondering right now, like is curious about their own strengths and they've never taken a strengths um, assessment, is there a way to do that with you specifically? Or is that something you'd send them somewhere else? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can get the assessment online at gallup.com. Um, but if you're interested in going a little bit deeper, um, I also sell the assessment. So I get codes from Gallup and I can sell that to people. And I usually, um, I don't sell codes individually, but I will sell them as part of a coaching package. So if you're interested, I do a strengths deep dive package, which is exactly for those people who just want um, maybe two coaching sessions and their strengths, and they want to really understand them and know what to do with them, right? I so could somebody that. could come and have that, that you can go right. get Carol to, to get it. Because the thing about assessments I have found, and I have taken quite a few assessments, is it does really help to have somebody coach you through. What does all of this mean? Because sometimes it's like, there's my good things, there's my bad things. Okay, move on. But if yeah. you have somebody that really goes deep with you and explains like, this is actually where, you know, like where, what this means, and then ask questions that lets you kind of understand yourself in a different way and apply it to your life and your business. I feel like that is definitely the way to go. I agree. I'm really passionate about it. And I know, you know, a lot of business businesses will like jump from assessment to assessment. Um, mm -hmm. I think strengths is one of the best, but but honestly, I think for for teams and individuals, you're better off taking an assessment and digging really, really deep into it and really understanding it and using it to develop and to assess your goals and to look at all sorts of different things, um, kind of get everything you can out of that, mm -hmm. right? Rather than just doing four different assessments. Yeah. Squeeze all the juice out of that fruit. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and as a team, you can develop common language. Like it can give you common language, mm. right? So then you can easily refer back to it. And that that's when it really starts to become really powerful in an organization. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. All right. So how can I serve you today? What would be useful for you? I love it. So you know, one of the things that I have been trying to figure out in my business is um, who really is my ideal client. I would love mm -hmm. to sort of niche down to maybe an industry or yeah. I love everybody and I love working with lots of people and <laughs> I have a background in higher ed and I have some corporate clients and lots of different things. So my goal for the rest of 2023 is to see how many workshops and lunch and learns and retreats I can do with as many different types of organizations as I can so that I can start to kind of figure that out. I've kind of figured I, I can't just decide that randomly. Mm -hmm. would like to, um, so sometimes I will focus on long-term work with clients, but for the, the rest of this year, I really want to work on lunch and learns, retreats and workshops with as many different clients as I can. Um, most of my clients right now are local to me um, mm -hmm. and I do a lot of in-person stuff, but I also really love doing virtual workshops. So really my question for you is how can I sort of start selling more, get a broader reach? Mm. Well, one of the things that I would encourage you to do is look at who, who have been clients so far, right? Like attracts like. So look at your roster of clients. What industries are they in? And then are there like, I, I feel like for one of your clients, I'm thinking, I feel like they have multiple offices. I could be wrong. Yeah. So can you work your contact to introduce you to the other office? Because then you get to ride the coattails, right? Of the the office that you've already done work for who will already shout, you know, from the rooftops, how amazing right. you are and see if you can open the door there. And then if that doesn't, you know, if that doesn't turn into something, you might, 
if that's an industry or that's a, a client that you really enjoyed, I would go either, I would go this way. What are other like companies similar to this that I could reach out to and, and talk about, you know, I've done this work for a similar type company and here's how they're using it. And then is this something you guys would be open to discussing? Right. I think that makes sense. Or you could look at what are complementary um, businesses to that business that you've worked with because they have vendors, they have, you know, right. they have other businesses that they're working with. And so you can still use them to make introductions to other types of business. And what you might find is, oh, I really enjoy working with this type of client. And then I think that is going to help you figure out like what really is your, your niche and, and wow. start to, to figure it out from there. Cause I, I mean, I know right from doing a lot of corporate work, there are certain corporate clients that I enjoy working with. And there are other corporate <laughs> clients where I'm like, uh, not my favorite. Right. right. And so it does help me figure out from a, from a standpoint of who would I target so I would start there. Okay. Yeah. One of the things that makes me think about is that, you know, I think one of the things that some of the clients that I've enjoyed working with the most have in common is that their people are helpers. Okay. People like to serve other people, right? Okay. And I think it's interesting because I had not thought about that. And, and so I've done some work in the financial sector, multiple different teams. There was one team that that was really their ethos. And I really loved working with them. There were some other, because that's not necessarily like, you, that's not common necessarily in that industry. Got per it. Se, right? okay. But that was very true for that team. But like, I've loved working with, I loved working with a regional hospital and definitely go. all those people were servers. Right. And then even like the, one of the corporate clients that I worked with that I really enjoyed was a hospitality organization. It's a for-profit organization, but still people who were in service to others. So the other thing that you could look at too, for you specifically, so because you said hospitality, you know, there are some pretty significantly oh. big networking groups that focus on that area. Yeah. And so could you go and speak? Could you do a lunch and learn for their organization that would open you up to working with their members? Yeah. Um, there's a group in particular that uh, I have done some work for. And specifically, these are um, made up of like convention centers, their sales teams, um, and they have big teams, right? They have a yeah. lot of people, convention centers and uh, big like um, hotels that are putting on, you know, events and things like yeah. that. There, like there are some industry specific networking groups and they do bring in speakers and that might be one for you to see, like, can you get on their yeah. speaker roster? Because that may actually open the door for you for all your other work. I love that idea. Okay. Yeah. I have thought about this industry specific. I was actually having a conversation with a friend yesterday about networking groups and mm -hmm. like, what's the next step for each of us in networking. And, you know, I, I try to keep mine down to a couple of groups at a time, but I've been thinking like, perhaps there's an industry specific group, but I don't know what the industry is. So then that gets hard, but hospitality would be a fun one to experiment with. Yeah. I think hospitality would be a really good one for you. And so I would start doing some searches in your area and yeah. see if there is a chapter, like, is there a local chapter not too far from you? Could, yeah. could you go and like get to know the people or could you offer to do some type of a training or even a, a lot of times, you know, they're putting on a luncheon or something. And so they'll bring in yeah. a speaker. Um, I think I kind of on, honestly, I'm trying to think of how this originally came about. I had a client in Seattle that they offered um, like tours uh, mm -hmm. of the islands. So they had boats. And so I went in and trained their sales team. And that's kind of how I even got into this. It's like, because I trained their sales team, one of their members sat on the board of this organization. 
that then they had a speaker that dropped out at the last minute and she spoke up and said, I know somebody locally who would, you know, crush it for us. I went and did like a lunch and learn for them. And then that opened doors for me to then start speaking to like conference centers, hotels. Um, Now I didn't pursue that heavily because again, corporate is not my corporate work is not my favorite work. I'll, I do it and I, I'll, I do it. And I rather work with people like you. (laughs) Like that's my preference is I love working with, you know, women business owners, um, specifically entrepreneurs. So yeah, I think that would be a really good avenue for you. If you know that hospitality and, and then you could kind of start to figure out, right? Like, is this really, or do you go down the healthcare route? Because my guess is there are industry specific conferences, industry specific, um, networking organizations or associations that are affiliated with healthcare. Yeah. Well, in the two healthcare organizations that I have worked with, both, um, have had some unique needs coming out of COVID, right. Mm -hmm. That really make them need to pour into their people, right? Like two years ago, it was, we were really still in it. Right. And the hospital that I started working with then was really they just needed some to be re-energized, right? They Mm. were exhausted and burned out. Yeah. Um, And the organization that I'm actually working with later this week, um, they basically said, we have spent the last three years um, having to focus on compliance and making sure all the rules were in place. And we don't even know that our leadership team is as focused on the need. We don't think our leadership team is focused on the needs of our people anymore because we've been so rule-based. Oh, so interesting. Right. Which I think is a really interesting and probably a need across healthcare right now. That to me says, Carol, we need to get some, we need to get some articles like about this that you've written, or we need to get some video or we need to get, Uh, maybe, maybe there's even like a lunch and learn that you're putting on that we could change the name of the lunch and learn okay. and have it target that topic in particular. I like that. And and then you just start promoting the heck out of the fact that you've got this lunch and learn. Because I do think yeah. lunch and learns are a good way to dip their toe in the water and have a taste of what's possible with you and then go, well, what else can we do with her? How can we bring her in to help the team figure this piece out. And and it doesn't necessarily have to be the lunch and learn. It could be the all day training, right? For sure. For you, sure. You can do this on whatever level you want. But if you know that that's something that they're kind of struggling with, I mean, yeah. again, if you get a couple of people that are struggling with something, chances are others are also others struggling are with it. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so putting that out there as a topic. And then I think, you know, again, putting some articles out, um, that are around this topic that then have a call to action that there's this opportunity for them to, you know, get this facilitated workshop or this lunch and learn or, or however, you know, this could be the topic for your retreat. You could write multiple articles with a few different spins and you could have different calls to action, whether you want to drive them to a lunch and learn or an all day training or hiring you to do their next retreat. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting because I, and I don't know that this is true. I'm going to have to ask some questions, but it would not surprise me if that similar, if a similar concern was true for some hospitality organizations, because they also had a whole set of new rules yep. to follow for a long time. So right? again, you take, take this article that I'm talking about, yeah. not that it has to be an article and yeah. write it for hospitality, write it for healthcare and then challenge yourself to come up with another industry that you're that you're interested in testing it around. Yeah. See which one gets some traction. You know, cuz to me the thing about niching down is that it needs to be with the 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 what am I trying to say? It needs to be with the group that is going to be willing to hire a professional like you to come in and do this. And, and it could be that it is healthcare and it is hospitality. You know, my like sales coach in me goes, but what's the easier sell? Like focus on the easier sell. Yeah. Unless you don't enjoy that group, but you're saying I do enjoy this group. So focus on the low hanging fruit because then it's easier to build other, you know, once the, once the 
like it's rolling and it's easy and you're like, I got this. I could do this all day yeah. long in my sleep almost. Then you can start to explore other things. But yeah. I do think always go for low hanging fruit when it comes to getting like, get the money in the door. Yeah. Get the clients in the door because the experience yeah. that you get from delivering the trainings builds your confidence helps you elevate, raise your pricing. All of these things come yeah. as a result of selling whatever it is that you're going to sell. Right. Right. I love that. Okay. Okay. I work on an article and work on thinking of one more industry that might have similar concerns. I don't think that'll be hard. I don't have okay. a thought in my head, but I'm, yeah. We, we can, uh, you and I can brainstorm this over Voxer. You got it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So as we wrap up today, thank you so much for coming on and allowing this opportunity. Um, I always have two last questions. One is, what is one benefit you've received from being in the Sales Maven Society, if you're willing to share? Sure, absolutely. I think, um, you know, I'm a pretty quiet member, but I do a lot of reading in the Sales Maven Society. And um, I think one of the things that has happened over time is the more I read you editing other people's stuff. And the more I read posts, the more some of that, like your um, language starts to just come second nature, right? I read something the other day that somebody else had written for me for um, a post and it was, it had, it had like five I statements. And my initial reaction without even knowing why was this is terrible. And then I reread it and I was like, oh, that's because it has all these I statements. And, you know, Nikki tells us this, that this, that doesn't, you know, generate interest from other people. Anyway, I think that the longer I've been there, the more I read, the more it just starts to kind of sink in. Um, it's also just a beautiful community and you are so incredibly active. I think people don't, you know, I've been in a lot of coaching groups over the years and many times you don't really have that much access to the coach who is selling the group. And that is not at all true with you. Like you are so active in there and it's just, it's beautiful to know that we, that you will be answering our questions yourself. Thank you. Thank you. And I love that this is like, you're absorbing this and that you're like, okay, my first, you know, I read it and I go, I don't like this. And then, okay, why don't I like it? And that you're able to identify like, these are the things that are causing this to not resonate with me. So yeah. Oh, that makes me so happy. All right. Last question is, what is the best way for people to get in touch with you? Sure. Um, the best way to find me right now is really on LinkedIn, right? LinkedIn, I am Carol Wheeler or Carol McBride Wheeler, which is my maiden name. Um, you can find me on there. I post quite a bit. I do some videos on there. I love to talk to people in the in the DM. So you can certainly go to my website, nopaleadership.com, but LinkedIn, I would love if you are listening to this, um, go connect with me on LinkedIn. Tell Nikki and I that you listened to the podcast and um, what you thought. Yeah, for sure. Carol is definitely somebody that you will benefit from knowing. She's a brilliant, lovely, genuine, and super smart woman. So I encourage everybody to connect with her. And thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. I appreciate you as a person. I appreciate you as a client. You are a delight to work with. So thanks for being here. You're so welcome. It was a delight to do it. Okay. Thank you. And for you, the listener, thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate you showing up, listening each week, sharing the episodes, commenting on the episodes. I am so delighted when people share their biggest takeaway or their aha from an episode. So if you have one, please reach out to me. You can find me on social media. I tend to hang out on LinkedIn as well and also on Instagram. And I am on Facebook, but only for the Sales Maven Society members. So if you're not a member yet, come join us. The community is beautiful. It's filled with amazing people. And uh, Carol is right. I am very active in that group. So you get a lot of me in there. So <laughs> thank you so much for being here. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for listening to Sales Maven. Visit us online at yoursalesmaven.com slash maven for more resources to boost your confidence and skills. Are you ready to increase your confidence in your sales conversations? I have a gift for you that is going to show you exactly how to do that. It is my Closing the Sale ebook. It's all about leveling up your confidence, giving you language to use, how to 
seamlessly move somebody through the sales process. And you can get it right now by going to yoursalesmaven.com forward slash maven. Go grab it. 